everyone. How are you doing? Happy Wednesday. We're here Wednesday, Wednesday, Wednesday. Um, and it's hump day. We're halfway through the week. So they say, depending on how your week is. But if you have not seen me before, and this is your first time joining, my name is Melissa Jake, CEO and founder of Rescue Event Planning, also known as Olivia Popa Live Events. And I come here live every Wednesday for the next, well, two to three more weeks. Um, it will be um, at 8.30, but usually it's at 8 o'clock. Um, and so what I ask my nice uh, social media family, my Facebook family, I call them, I ask them if they can do this. Can they... Um, invite and share, invite and share, and then you invite and share again so that you're not keeping this knowledge to yourself so that you can share it out, right? So um, thank you so much for joining. And so I'm going to invite and share. Um, and, and I'm going to start my watch party. as you guys invite as well. And I come here live. Okay, perfect. So I have my watch party going. All right, so today's topic is how do I market um, my events, right? So there's multiple ways um, that you're able to market um, your event, but let's go, I love to go on the free version, right? The free version is just what you're doing, is watching me. Social media is powerful for your event. Um, the best marketing strategy or tool I like to say is utilize your free resources because there are people who are willing to just support you because it's you and um, you want to make sure that you have people who are on your side that's for you. So utilizing social media should not be your only way of marketing, but I'm using that first because it's free and I love free stuff and you love to get a deal, right? And so there are free ways on social media to use marketing. One is sharing, asking people to share. I was actually just talking to um, a couple of my uh, um, church members, I guess you call them. I'm helping them with an event and I'm trying to get people to come out to this event was different incentives to inviting people to this event. So for example, um, let's say you're hosting an ice cream social with your product that you're going to have and um, you want people to attend your free event, okay? So free gets a little tricky because, you know, people are like, oh yes, free, I'll show up. But you know, if their schedule gets busy, they're not showing up. That's okay. So incentives at least to get the marketing out because maybe they won't show up, but their friends' friends might show up is you um, do a challenge. A lot of people do the challenge, like how Beyonce did her uh, before I let go challenge. Everybody wanted Beyonce to tag them. Okay, great. So we're not on the Beyonce status, but that's okay. So what, um, what, what you can do is you can um, ask them to share this post, and then in their post, use the hashtag and invite somebody else to share it. Simple, you know, hashtag, um, get your free vanilla ice cream day and, and tag somebody else for the challenge, right? The other thing is um, like they're doing more of a family day. So it's gonna be like a family day um, challenge or the best family picture challenge. So the person will share it and then tag three people, and then um, with the new pic, with their family picture, and then um, you know do the and then use the hashtag. So if you're using hashtag Family Day 2019, then you know that's the hashtag. So then now your hashtag is starting to trend. Your shares are going out for the event, and people are like, what is this? I want. I have a beautiful family. 
I know about that. Let me do that, right? So that's how you can get that momentum of getting your event out by doing an incentive of a challenge and your name gets put into a raffle. But you have to do that. You have to like the page, the Instagram page and the Facebook page. You have to uh, post your picture with the hashtag in it and then you have to tag three people, whatever, right? Anyway, it gets that momentum going. Hey, Lavelle, nice to uh, see you joining. So that is one thing, right? And the main thing for marketing that I love to, to love to love to stress is my ROI. If I'm putting money out, I wanna see my return on investment, whether it's financial or in attendance, right? So what do you mean, Melissa? Butts and seats, or am I gonna return my money some other way, right? Not all of it's about making money, but you want the return to be either in the attendance of the event, or is that the return of my event is free, but people purchase my book or my services at the event, right? Okay, so um, that is one way, the sharing, the um, basically using an incentive of a challenge to get people to come to your event because the challenge is going out. Now, timing on that. I would at least do that 30 days out because some things take time on algorithms and algorithms are so different now. So you never know how that goes. Hey, Myron. Hey, Ursula. Thanks for joining. So um, you want to make sure that you are giving enough time for that. So 30 days out using your challenge for your event is great. The other thing that I have to talk about because I spoke on the panel and I truly support Facebook <laughs> is that you use Facebook ads. Um, Facebook ads are amazing. They can do wonderful things. You have your target audience. You have your age group that you're talking, that you want to talk to. You're utilizing the demographics, somebody who just got married, somebody who um, um, is interested in, in book clubs, like whatever your event's about, utilizing your Facebook ads and doing the targets are just phenomenal because it's, I mean, you don't get that type of free marketing on social media um, or I mean, marketing at that cost, you don't get it that cheap as much as you can. Now, I'm not saying that you only spend $5 on your marketing plan, not at all, okay? At least for an event, I would put out between 50 to $75 um, for to market your event, depending on the amount of people you wanna come. Now, the more people you need, if you're like trying to fill a room of a thousand people, your budget of marketing is have to go up, okay? So it really just depends on the amount of people. Um, I like to do the rule of 100, go from 100, do 50, 150, 75, you know, follow that rule. I think that's a very good rule to do. Now, the difference of Instagram and social media, if you guys didn't know, Facebook created Instagram. Shocker, if you didn't know, right? So if you have a business page on Facebook, it will automatically start doing um, your, your um, sponsor ads on Instagram. You don't have to double dip, um, but you have to change the settings to do that, okay? And so you need to really think, like Instagram, you can't have that much words on your, I mean, Facebook will tell you this too, but if you have a lot of words on your flyer, it doesn't really do too well. Instagram is more visual. So you're trying to get an attracting photo that's out there for Instagram. So though it does hit both markets, I would really kind of pick more of a visual picture that kind of is eye-catching for your event and then put the verbiage in your um, in your 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 area there where you put the, the words and then don't do your hashtags in your in the same verbiage put your hashtags as a comment. If you're not putting hashtags at all, that's a problem. That's a big problem. Please use hashtags. Now, Instagram only allows you to do 30. I believe it's 30 now. Um, and that's fine because when you have way too many hashtags, too much things going on. You need to be um, specific as possible, but still make sure you're hitting all your target audience, right? And so when I do events in DC, I'm always tagging hashtag DMV events because most people want to see what events are happening in DMV and they actually have a DMV group, events group. So then they're always getting tagged and they get the notifications they're getting tagged and they may actually put that in their group. Um, and so you want to, you know, utilize that. So Facebook ads, Instagram ads, that is my number two on how to market for your event, right? 
So now I'm gonna go off of social media because yes, social media is great. There's always other ways you can do press releases, give it out to the media um, and making sure that the pre your, your local media knows about your event. Um, one little key thing is is like finding something that is on the on the national calendar that ties in with your event. I think that's a great idea. Um, but um, you need to do that. Um, trying to pitch to media is hard. It's like, listen, I'm struggling myself. Okay, it's still hard for me. Okay, but events are better than just an event planner trying to get on social media. So if your event is something like when I worked with the scoliosis, I got them on to um, to the Baltimore station. I think it was Fox 45. Um, and because they're big on health in the community. And so, um, you know, their event was very specific and it was great scoliosis. It dealt about Scoliosis not only for kids, but usually if you find out about scoliosis in your childhood. So kids was there, you know, it kind of was like a warm heart, fuzzy story type of thing. And so that works, right? So um, you want to make sure whatever your um, event is about, make sure the right TV station, local TV station, um, actually deals with those type of things, even though they all kind of do. But you kind of know if you watch like the morning shows or the um, midday shows, don't sleep on the 12 o'clock midday shows, okay? They need content because nobody's really watching the news at 12 noon. So those who actually do have those shows at 12 noon, don't sleep on them. Um, they need content and that might be another way to get in, at least get your foot in. You can't get the morning show, but you can get, the after, you can get that midday and that's fine too. So doing your pitch, your press release, press releases aren't hard to do, you guys. There's templates on Google. Do your research, get a template, fix it up, make sure the grammar's right, everything is right, and you send that bad boy out. Now, emailing coldly, not knowing people is hard because people don't know who you are, like, who is this? I'm reading this event, okay, whatever, right? So that's hard. Sometimes you do need to do a face-to-face. -face. You need to get um, to talk to them on the phone and then follow up per our conversation to send it out. Um, another thing is, um, don't forget about the old days when you were in college. I went to the Morgan State University and we had a bridgeology, people who didn't leave the bridge. They were there at 9 a.m. They were there at 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And they were ready for the evening classes at 6, 7, and then at 8, right? So don't sleep on your <laughs> people who did this. Um, though people are like, man, they're never going to get out of college. I can't believe this. They had the right marketing strategy and they took turns. They took turns on that bridge and they were handing out flyers. Don't sleep on sending out flyers. Like, um, that is still a great way of marketing. If your event is for a local community and it's free and it's going to be a moon bounce and all that stuff. I mean, you should be going to grocery stores. You should be going to the library. You want the community to come in. Definitely that face-to-face, -face, wear your logo t-shirt while you're passing it out. That is like, that's the best thing and all it costs you is the printing of the flyer, right? So that is another way of marketing your event. Um, so we talked about social media. We talked about doing a press release. We talked about... Um, doing your, your passing out your flyers hand bill, doing for social media, as we talked about doing the challenge, doing a challenge around your event so people can share, like your page and, and get a, a drawing of, I don't know, $150 Visa gift card. I don't know, whatever you want to do. Again, you can get that sponsored. Um, that would be a way to get something sponsored and, and team up with somebody locally to sponsor. Another way to market your event, and it's probably be, it'll be one of my last two, a way of marketing your event is um, when you have like guest speakers or panelists, they are a part of the event, you know, and so market them. So-and-so is going to be at the event. Are you going to be there? You're marketing them. Give them a flyer so that they can send out to their, um, their listing and their following as well. Um, another way is when you have attendees that are coming to your event, especially if you're doing a paid event like a conference and you want people to come in and you're, you're charging tickets, give them a flyer. Melissa Jakes, she'll be an attendee or VIP status at the 
whatever event, right? And I'm like, oh my gosh, yes, I am. I'm posting on my social media. I'll be there. Will you, right? And so it's that whole whole thing going on. Um, oh, some other good tips. Uh, Craigslist, people sleep on that because it's a listing. Google is amazing and algorithms are amazing. And so if you have your listing on Craigslist, sometimes that can come up in the, in your Google search. And people still utilize Craigslist. We've gotten volunteers for the Scoliosis event via Craigslist. Amazing, okay? Um, so Craigslist um, and also Eventbrite. Utilize Eventbrite as well because when people are searching for events, it's on Eventbrite. Okay. Um, also utilize again on Facebook. You can do a watch party like how I'm doing on my personal page. I have a watch party going on. I can leave this watch party and it's still going on without me physically talking about the event. So I can easily run a video of looping of my, of my event commercial that I might have done and do a watch party from that. And it will go for 24 hours. And I can redo it again and then redo it again, redo it again as much as I want to. So doing starting watch parties and doing more commercial styles of your event, that's, uh, that's a way to go as well. Because you don't have to physically be there to talk about or run this event every single time, but it's running as if you were live. So that's good because most people get notification when somebody goes live and they're kind of like, oh, what are they going live about, right? Um, and so my last thing that's important that people forget um, you need an email list. And if you don't have an email list, you know, if social media was to drop dead tomorrow, then I'm sorry for you. So I almost have about 2000 people in my email list and I'm still growing. And that's very small compared to some other people who have like 50, 75,000 people in their email list. So growing your email list, it takes time, but um, the way to do that is at these events. Having them register via Eventbrite, you're capturing their email address, right? And so I would definitely say if you don't have an email list, that is the way you should go. Do it on Eventbrite. You can share it on Facebook. You can share it on Twitter and Instagram as well. And then you direct people to go and register via Eventbrite because every email you get, every email address is now into your email list blast. That's how you continue your audience, right? So um, making sure that you advertise to your audience on your on your email list. If you do have an email list, you should be advertising your events um, through your email list audience. Whether you whether you email your email blast goes out twice a week, once a week, once a quarter. Should be going out once a quarter, but once a month, maybe. Usually, it'll bi monthly. However, um, make sure you are advertising the event on your email list as well. Um, and so, boy, did we talk a lot about <laughs> that. So we have our marketing for your events. You have your social media, and there's multiple ways on social media, your Facebook ads, your um, watch parties, your, um, what do we call it? We called it our um, incentive, your incentive, your challenges on social media. Um, and we said Facebook and Instagram ads. Then we talked about old school, get flyers, go out to your community and pass out flyers to your target audience, please. Don't just be passing on to everybody. You know, again, I use the grocery store. If you're doing a community event about family, people got to eat. Most people are families. Some are, some of them are singles, but they, you know, there's a hit and miss type of thing. But you'll do very well if you to do that, right? But if you're doing something more for college, um, um, college kids, like you need to go to the college campus and pass off flyers or talk to the different deans, uh, the business department or whatnot, and make sure that they have that event as well for their students and give them a student rate. Give them a student rate that way that they feel like they're loved, right? Um, then we talked about um, Eventbrite, Craigslist, and then our emailing list. So there's so many things, you guys. On how to market your event, and oh, and we talked about um, we talked about press release and getting it out to uh, local media. So, um, hey, Ursula, yes, yes, I know so many things, girl, so many things. Um, so I'm hoping you guys got some good nuggets. Let me know if you guys have questions. I'm just going through and looking at comments. Hey, guys. Perfect. Yes. Let me know if you have comments or questions. Um, 
And if you, um, if something like really resonated with you and you're like, oh my gosh, that is so great. And I hope that uh, this helped you guys. I'm great, great. No problem. You're welcome. You're welcome, you guys. Um, and so I come here live every Wednesday um, for the next three weeks. It will be at 8.30. Then we'll go back to our traditional 8 o'clock. Right now I am um, doing my epic event uh, management certification training. And if you want more information about that, just send me a message. Um, the class has started, but you um, can still join to catch up. Um, but probably after next week, we'll cut it off because you'll kind of be too far um, on that. Sure. So on Facebook, um, I'm at Rescue Event Planning. And let me put it in here too. Uh, let me tag Rescue. Rescue Event Planning on Facebook. And then um, on Instagram, it is at rescue underscore events. Um, I don't know why it's not letting me tag rescue. Maybe because I'm in a watch party. So right. But yeah, so rescue, um, rescue event planning on Facebook and then at rescue underscore events on Instagram. And then you can always um, follow Melissa Jakes on on Instagram is the Melissa Jakes and on Facebook is Melissa Jakes. Perfect, you guys. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Um, I hope this was great information um, for you guys uh, for your next event. And if you are looking for an event planner. Um, you can always uh, go to uh, rescueeventplanning.com. Let me put that in there. And you can free, and I said free, a uh, consultation, and we'll go over your event and see how we can help you uh, make your event epic as possible. Okay, perfect. All right, you guys, thank you so much for joining. I hope you guys have a great evening and have a good night. Bye.